Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Man Explains, where a man pedantically interrupts whatever you're doing and starts explaining stuff. In this particular case, what I'm going to explain today is something that I uh, didn't know uh, yesterday, uh, and then was explained it to me, and now I'm going to act like a subject matter expert on it. Um, and that is that Touch Designer now lets you do instancing based on uh, textures rather than on uh, chops, uh, channel operators, or uh, or surface operators. So this, the cool thing about that is um, doing stuff in chops and sops, they, uh, it's a little bit slower. You're doing stuff or a lot slower. You're doing stuff on the CPU and it becomes CPU bound and then if you have to transfer stuff over to the GPU, uh, you know, that, that gets saturated really quickly. Um, so for today's example, we're going to be making a lot of bananas because it's touch designer. Uh, and I just wanted to show you what we got here. So we have a box, um, high density box. It's 80 by 80 by 80. Let's actually drop it down to 10 by 10 by 10. Right? We've got this box operator. Uh, and it's a grid of 10 by 10 by 10, which is a thousand points. A thousand beautiful points of light. And uh, you can see that uh, if you turn that into a chop, you have uh, X, Y, and Z, where the X goes up continuously, the Y loops every hundred or so, and the Z loops every ten. And uh, that explains the X, Y, Z locations of each of these grid points. And if we wanted to put a banana at every one of those points, we would take this SOP, uh, and each of those bananas is drawn onto a square, right? A grid of, you know, two rows and two columns. And uh, and then it's instanced to this geo here. So we actually tell that geo that we want to draw based off of the SOP, and um, we tell it that the X is dictated by the TX channel here, the Y is dictated by the TY channel, and the Z is dictated by the TZ channel. So here we have what looks like a matrix of bananas. Um, and if we want to, say, grow and shrink this cube, we set the scale and we equate it to this LFO, which goes between 0 and 10, which is a little bit nuts, so let's actually just uh, slow this guy down, actually, let's just decrease the frequency on this guy a little bit, because it's just so crazy, actually, let's increase it a little bit, okay, and then let's just decrease the amplitude a little bit on that one, so it's, and the offset, so let's just say it goes, there we go, look at this crazy flying banana situation here. Um, actually, we, the offset has to be at least half of what the amplitude is, or else you start going into the negatives, which I guess is fine. But in this case, um, let's just make this one and two, and it goes between zero and two. I think. Uh, and yeah, so that's a uh, that's how that top works. Now, the problem with this is because we're uh, doing this on the CPU. Oh, I was wrong. It's going between negative one and two. So actually, let's draw this amplitude to one. It should be going between zero and one, or zero and two. So, anyways, the uh, you can see this box growing, and then the equivalent uh, XYZ locations of the bananas growing. Now, once again, the problem with this is that as we get bigger, if we have more points, it ceases to be very fast. So you can look at now the FPS up here is 33 frames a second um, at just 40 by 40 by 40. So if I drop it down to 20 by 20 by 20, you're almost back up to 60, 60 frames a second. But it has to do this every frame. Uh, on the CPU, which is slow. Um, and if you want to check out how slow it is, actually, let's just bump this up back up to 40 again, and then we can look at how slow it is. We're going to go to the dialogs, we're going to look at the performance monitor, and uh, whoops, I'll analyze a frame. And you can see all these little operations, and then this huge operation that gets taken up by that one frame. 
or by that one operation in that frame, right? The the drawing of the new XYZ points on the on the CPU to all to uh, every point on this on this box, and then having to transfer it to the SOP. And what's uh, so I was working on a project that used an idea like this with a uh, Vincent Ouz, and he pointed out to me that this was happening. And he also pointed out that. Even if I turn off play on this thing, it's still drawing every frame. We can still uh, do the performance monitor, uh, clear it, uh, analyze another second, or analyze another frame, and sure enough, it's still happening. Even if this isn't changing, this is still cooking. Um, I guess because it's expecting this to be changing? I don't know. So let's actually just decouple this and just set it to 1. So the thing about scaling is it's just multiplication, right? You just take all the points and you multiply it by whatever this value is uh, in XYZ space. So um, how do we get out of this, right? What What is the value of uh, you know doing this with a texture? So let's go ahead and modify this and turn it into a texture. And here you actually see, actually let's inspect this texture. Um, you can see that the resolution is 32768x and then 3y, right, which I guess is the xyz, and that's just wrong. We really don't want to do that because um, we have more than 32768 points, and we can actually um, change this value to be even more, and it's still 32768. So what we really want is, instead of the y being the, uh, you know, representing whether or not it's tx, ty, tz, we actually want to ignore the y here and actually um, choose to be RGB. So here, the R represents the, the x, the, the green channel represents the y, and the blue channel represents the z. And actually, we also want to tell it, don't crop along channels, but you'll still be stuck at 32,768. Um, and you should just tell it to fit texture to a square. So now you've got a much more readable kind of uh, texture. And then I'm just going to uh, put this to a null. That's always kind of best practice. I'm going to tell this instance to, whoops, that's not the way to do that. I'm going to tell this instance to use this operator. And so instead of having a TX, TY, TZ, we have an R, G, and B channel, and we're back in business. We're exactly where we were before. Um, and here's like a, a great example of why you'd want to use a null. Um, I can actually just drop in this math here. And the math doesn't really do anything quite yet, but uh, you know, by dropping this in here, I can do many things before I before I go out to that null. And uh, uh, ideally, I'd like to be able to multiply it, like to be able to scale by this LFO, and I did, and it actually doesn't affect the FPS, right, even if the LFO is active. It's going at a nice, smooth, creamy 60 frames a, a second, and, and we're doing it at what, like 70 by 70 by 70? That's quite a few points. Even at 90 points, once it you know it it loses a little bit of frames when we when we start drawing it, but uh, it's still way more performance, right? This is a nice fast GPU and a slow ass CPU. So there you have it. Um, and so this actually just came out this month in the newest build of Touch Designer, and uh, just you can actually imagine quite a few things that you could do with this. But I was originally going to build a GLSL shader. That would uh that would take all of these arguments and create this output, and then I realized why bother? I could just do this once, cook it one time, and then do all my math afterwards, and it's much easier, and it's much better if you're lazy, and I'm excessively lazy. So here we are. Um, so so there you have it. If you uh come up with anything cool to do with this, let me know. But I think it's I think it's really great. Uh, Alright, thanks. Thanks for tuning in.